Give me one second, please. Okay, take all the time you want. We each girl will have time to say happy birthday to Esty, and we want to hear it's such a special time before Sukkot that we celebrate birthdays. We also had somebody who just celebrated her thirtieth. Hopefully, she'll be on so we can tell her happy birthday as well. Give me one second. The kids just came upstairs. Let me just get them back down, and I'm gonna come. Is that how I? Us women can never have a break for, for a long time, right? Five minutes and then something's going to come. Baruch Hashem. Hello. Hi, Kathy. How nice to see you as well. Okay. Hey, can we see your new baby? Where is he? I don't even know where he is. Where's Label? They want to see you. He's doing in the other room, actually. That's what Mati just said. Okay. Um, here it is. Hi, Holly. Hi. So the question was, have you got the post Yom Kippur blues? So the question is, I think I have the post Yom Kippur blues. Every year I get all inspired by the fast. One second, lady, can you shut the door to the basement, please? Thank you. Okay, um, I think I have the post Yom Kippur blues. Every year I get all inspired by the fast and I am sure that I will be more committed to Judaism than the year ahead. But somehow, it dissipates pretty quickly, like around the third mouthful after breaking the fast. I don't want to lose it again this year. Any suggestions? So Aaron Moss, he writes for Chabad.org, and he responded really nicely. And he said, I know just what you need. You need to be swaddled. A newborn baby moments after its birth is taken by a midwife and wrapped in a swaddling cloth. This serves to keep the newborn protected and warm. Having just emerged from the security and nurture of the womb, the baby is particularly vulnerable and sensitive. A good swaddling cloth gives the infant a sense of, protect of protection from the cold and the harsh world into which it has emerged. But swaddling doesn't last long. You rarely see teenagers wrapped up in a cloth with their, their arms behind their ears. Swaddling is a brief bridging stage between the safety of the womb and the hazards of real life. A well-wrapped baby will eventually grow to face life unwrapped. A swaddle cloth just helps them get there. Your soul needs that bridge too. You have emerged from the womb of Yom Kippur. Soul pure and renewed. The negative residue from the past has been cleansed. Your soul is now tender and sensitive and easily susceptible to the coldness of spiritual apathy and other moral germs floating in the air. You need some protection. You need to be swaddled you need a sukkah. The sukkah is among the only mitzvahs that you do with your whole being. The holy ear of the sukkah completely envelops and surrounds you. It turns everything you do into a holy act. Simply eating, drinking, and chatting is a mitzvah when it is done in the divine shade of the sukkah. When you sit in a sukkah, you are swaddled by sanctity. Going from the highs of Yom Kippur straight back into the routine of the mundane world it's like taking a newborn from her mother's womb straight out into the cold night. You just can't do that. Sit in the sukha, bask in its sacred shade, feel wrapped in its warm embrace. You aren't suffering from post Yom Kippur blues. You are just an unswaddled soul. The sukha can fix that. Wow. I love that. Very nice. Very nice. So nice. Yep. Yeah. I thought that was really nice. Very nice. Very beautiful. Yeah. I'm Thanks going to camp sharing. in the sukkah. Beautiful. Yes. A nice feminine part to it as well. Let me see where. Go back. Okay. Rachel, you would like to, would you like to add to that? Yeah, well, I would like, you know, it's such a nice thing. Maybe girls, we should start whenever we have birthdays. I don't know, always make a surprise. And it doesn't have to be a 50th or a 30th or a special number. We can always, you know, dedicate the class to birthdays and then more people join and, and then we'll learn. It's so, so nice. Um, how do I make my uh, screen so I see everyone? Rafi, do you know how to do the screen so we can see everyone or each one has to do it on their own? I'm so not computer. Mm. So, yeah, I'd like to ask you something. 
I had my birthday in the, Eng the English date was uh, on Yom Kippur. It was a very quiet birthday. And, uh, and the real one is the Hebrew one falling on Simchat Torah. Uh, wow. so yeah, so it's, one yeah, it's one close to another. Um, do you celebrate both birthdays, like the, both dates? It's good. We'll speak a little bit about the birthday. We spoke a little bit what a birthday is when we had Mrs. Wetro's 39th birthday, <laughs> the way around, as we're writing to pray. And uh, I know that um, Cheryl Zag just celebrated also a special birthday a few days ago, she told me. So it's wonderful. Our birthday is the Jewish birthday. We can have a birthday, if I may. When we were born, I know because we live in a secular world and so on and so forth, so many of us celebrate and remember just the English ones. I'm gonna give you an example. When I was born, I know many of you know, I was born on Hanukkah. It happened to be that year, December 13th. Uh, I was born the fourth candle of Hanukkah. So why do I celebrate December 13th right. or the fourth candle of Hanukkah? Because it's a yontav, it's, you would think, yeah, obviously it's Hanukkah. So the same thing, I don't know the English word of Esti, but when she was born, it was the day after Yom Kippur. It's a very special day, and if we have time, we'll discuss it also. Very special time between Yom Kippur and Sukkot. As Norit said, she was born on Simchat Torah, so her birthday is Simchat Torah. We are used to celebrating our English birthday. I'm not telling you not to, but the real birthday is the Hebrew. When you do a bas mitzvah, when you do a, um, a bar mitzvah, when you want to know when your bar mitzvah is or when your bas mitzvah is, you don't do from the English date you were born, you do the Hebrew date. So nothing wrong to celebrate both if you want, but really, especially here in the class here in the family conversation that we're discussing Yiddish things, we are celebrating the Hebrew one because that's the birth of our neshama. That's the day that Hashem is telling each one of us, you remember, I brought your special soul to the world for a special reason. You matter to me. I want you to be alive. I want you to accomplish all the special Great. things that you have to accomplish. And that's why it's special. We have special customs on, on the oh. birthday. On the birthday girl asked, did you want to share some of the customs, what we do on a Yom Oled, on a birthday? Before we start about Sukkot, uh, ask Mrs. Mrs. Swedro, Mrs. Swedro's birthday is a Polish. Um, you're supposed to give extra staka. <laughs> right. You're supposed to make a for bringing, which is a, a get together with friends and learn something. Which um, we are doing now. Yes. You're supposed to eat a shechianu fruit, a new fruit, and make a blessing shechianu on it. Very good, right? Um, you're supposed to say extra tehillim, learn something extra. How do you say? Neglin chasidus? You're supposed to learn something extra? And that's a third um, part of the Torah on the, uh, right? And make uh, new resolutions, right? New resolutions, new, yes. What resolution yes. you made for your fourth year? So that's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a little um, bit of art, I'm going right? to try to judge people more favorably. That's very good. And we just <laughs> celebrated a few, what, a month ago or so, uh, um, Eugenia's 50th. And I don't know if Radella is on or not, but she, her Hebrew word is yep. Yom Kippur. Radella, she's on? And we want to tell her Mazel because she just celebrated her 30th. Mazel Tov. Really wonderful, wonderful. A lot of birthdays, very, very nice. It's so spe such a special time. Make new resolutions, time to meditate. It says time of Idbonendu, to meditate, to think, what have I done with my 30 years, 40 years, 90 years of life, whatever. However old I am, Hashem gave me all those years, and Hashem is going to give me eternal life, as we said, now is coming. Can you close them up? To the time of Mashiach, so we want to make new resolutions and, and use each moment, each day, with something special, right? Um, do we want Esther now to give us blessings? Esther, we want to leave it to the end of the class, and you give us blessings there. Uh, what, I don't know, Whichever. The, you're nursing the baby. I know how yes. it is. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful time in our lives um whichever whichever why so, don't we do it now because you're on you're you're, you're we're just all wishing you <laughs> good yeah and okay so we, please the mic is yours and then if somebody wants to wish us more write in the chat on teller please 
and then we'll go to Sukkot. We're not rushing. A birthday is very special. Special number 40. If you want to say something about number 40, Esti, or I will say, and you will say, you can, you can say something special about 40. You've been, you've been in the 40s. I am only just touching it. <laughs> I've been in the 40s. It seemed like it was so long ago. I remember when I turned 40. I remember actually when I turned 20, and I told my parents, that I'm so, we will lead them in Nora, as I said, my, my birth is on the camel. And I said, I feel so, I don't know if I can say old or mature. And I remember they were laughing. They said, what, 20 is a child. <laughs> and I thought to myself, how are they telling me that, you know? Baruch Hashem, they at the time were, yeah, I don't know, they were probably in their, I guess they were in their 40s at the time or so. Can't hear you. Oh, you know, I can understand. Well, one thing I'll say about Forty, there is many, many things, and then as to you will speak. In Pirkei Avot, there is a passage that says, "When you're What's five, that? when you're when you uh, you know Ben Chomish Lemikra, you learn Torah. When you're thirteen, when you're eighteen, twenty, thirty, you know each, each age is something special. Hey. And number forty. <laughs> Why? Sorry. Yeah. No, Maybe she's got an evening gown. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I some of us want to mute ourselves if we're speaking because then we can hear it all or just try to speak quietly. So number 40, it says, Ben Arbaim le Bina. Bina is wisdom. Uh, well, more maybe understanding. Chokhmah is wisdom, understanding. And it says in Torah that it takes 40 years and the 40th year we can understand and appreciate the learning of our sages, appreciate what we have learned, what we know. So I guess it takes time. I mean, there is obviously, according to Torah, some mat maturity, some understanding, some special connect connecting that we connect to the Torah with Bina, with understanding at the age of 40 that we didn't understand, we didn't comprehend right. before. It's something special, Esther, that you have now. And all of us already turned 40, I guess. We should have been there. We can tap to that special realm. Those of us who are still not, <laughs> we'll get there and it's a special number we should the brock i give you is that you should be able to use uh, the saying of our sages ben arbaim labin in 40 to understanding to understand to comprehend the torah to understand the learning there's certain stage in life and at 40 it begins that we understand more we appreciate more you know many times we spoke about it in our classes together you know every mitzvah that we do and we think, well, I learned it when I was five. I learned it when I was 25. I'm learning it now when I'm 55. But I, I'm, I understand it in a different way. Highly more, I see you also join us. We're going to hear now a special bracha from Esti to all of us. And then whoever else wants to give her birthday wishes. So Esti, you are all here. We're all ears to listen to you. Thank you, yes. Mrs. Matasov. Yeah, yeah, Thank you for whoever arranged this uh, Zoom. Um, I'd like to give you all a bracha, a nice blessing that everyone should have a very healthy year, a happy year, a safe year, a year that whatever they need, parnasa, which is livelihood, hatzlacha, you know, everything that they wish a for. A baby. A baby? Amen. Amen. <laughs> From my mouth to Hashem's ears. Amen. Uh, uh, whatever you had prayed for on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur should be fulfilled and given to you with the most, in the most revealed way and the most open way. And you shouldn't even have to ask for anything this year. Everything should just be given to you on the most beautiful silver platter ever. Amen. So Amen. Many Join. It's so nice. I see Irina Babaganov all the way from uh, yeah. Texas, Arizona. Yeah, I didn't even get to that yet. Where's oh, here's the next page. Okay. And no, Limor. Wow. And um, thank uh, you, Eddie. Anna Marosa, we sing. Thank Marosa. you, everyone. So nice. Wow. Thank you, everyone, thank for you, joining the Zoom. I really appreciate it. I feel very special and very loved. So nice, and Malka Labelle. Yes, I see now too. Very nice. Hi. I don't see everybody's names from time to time. I hope I did not miss any of you. Uh, and Marina. Shana, I see. And Dorit. Oh, and, nice. um, hi, Kathy. 
Yeah, Hi, Malka. Hi, Adina. I should, I, I'll, you know, when you, when you all will talk, then I'll say hi to you instead of uh, back and forth. Good. But thank you all for coming, and I really, really appreciate it. It's really special. It's so I, I, I was always very nervous about turning 40, and it was kind of something like, I think I went through the 30s. I think it was a lot harder for me to turn 30 because I was like, oh, you're 20s and you're invincible. And then 30s is like, you feel like you're already getting into like different territory. So I was like, oh, 30s and 40s. 40s, just a day older. And um, I feel younger, actually. I feel like I'm still 18. <laughs> I still get comments that I'm 18 and people still look at me and say, oh my goodness, that's yours? And I say, you know, <laughs> Some people actually ask me if I'm too young to have kids. So let me stay young and I'm happy. <laughs> if, if this is 40, I'll take it at 60. I'll take it at 80. I'm happy. Wonderful. A very okay. special blessing. You look very beautiful and very young. I can eat it. So nice. So nice. Okay. I also want to say some of you come every week or every other week. And some of you just joined us today. And I want to tell you that it's special. It's very nice. If you can stay till the end. It's usually about an hour and we learn and we discuss and we say hello and it's just something that, you know, gives us energy for the whole week, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yeah. Who else wants to share some words? Uh, wishes to ST Mazeltov, either by chat yes. or orally? I think that all your classes are amazing. They're very inspiring and giving us lots of energy to call over again to us, all you. what you do. Yeah, I second that. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Asino. You know, that's great. And the, the thing that you just shared was very nice. Um, as your tall is your two. Uh, somebody else wants to say something, Rose, to ask me? Esti, I want to wish you a very, very happy birthday till 120. Remain the same young and smiling and beautiful as you are. And I wish you all the brochas. Thank you so much for your brochas. Wish it for you and your whole family for a healthy, healthy, sweet year full of joy. Amen. Full joy. Amen. Thank you, Yudina. Thank you so much. Esti, I heard from Rabbi Matasov that he was blessing your husband and he blessed him to be Ad Me'akesrim. And I love that blessing. When you reach the age of 100, you'll be like 20. And you look like 20. Amen. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful blessing. I love that. And Sarah Imenu, that he says she was 120 cents, so 7, 20, and 100. That and 127 years, she was as beautiful as she was young, and she had no sin. Yeah. SD, can I also can I also say that I want to wish you a have very very happy birthday? Thank you, Linda. And, and you're such a special special person. You have a special place in my heart. And wishing you lots and lots of health to you and all of your family, Shubling. Um, health, wealth, happiness, anything you can only desire and wish for, may you have. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lee Moore. You're welcome. Good to see you. I haven't seen you people too. forever. I like, know. Thank God for Zoom. I know. Yeah. It's been a long time. Yes. Thank God for all of us getting together and celebrating your birthday and other birthdays and just getting together. Yeah, amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lee Moore. No Thank problem. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful girls. Somebody else wants to say something else? So we should start about Sukkot and then we'll do again whatever girls you want. It's so nice to celebrate. I want to wish her all the best. Have a healthy, happy year. And you're always my inspiration. And we love your family. And we wish you um, like to grow and all this desire will come true. And oh, could you hold me? Um, come and lots of health oh, to everyone. Oh, hold me? One second, please. And after the stream, we would have a parnasa and lots of happiness. That's the most important. Sorry, I have a little visitor here. Hi. <laughs> this is so sweet. So cute. Those visitors are great. That is.
Thank you so and much, honey. Somebody else wanted to That was so me? special. Thank you so much. Amen and Mazel Tov. By the way, I want to say something about uh, birthday, Hebrew birthday and the regular birthday. <laughs> Very important to celebrate both of them. Because my mom, since I, I was three, four, I remember, told me, on your day of your birthday, you were a king. So I celebrate. Until the mitzvah, she says, it's enough. There's no two days. Now it's only one day. Choose one. You can't be queen today and the other day and not do anything. So, but it's cool to celebrate both of them. Like, um, I love it when I was kid. I'm not doing those two days. Nothing. No homework, no nothing. I'm, I'm a queen of the castle in the house. So I celebrate my, birth, my Hebrew birthday and also my, uh, uh, my um, regular birthday. But also Adam, my son, celebrate two and ask two gifts and everything. He celebrate the Hebrew, which is Yud of uh, Shvat, and he celebrate his um, 3rd of February. So it's a tradition that we're passing along until it's the bar mitzvah, I told him. So he's still happy. <laughs> <laughs> you get older faster. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to tell you also, do you see the chat box? No, I don't see any chat box. So at the bottom of your screen, move your mouse down, you'll see it says chat. Yeah, a lot of people writing, so Emily, many, many people. So if you press on the writing. chat, the chat box will pop up and you'll see a whole bunch of people wish you happy birthday in there. So you can. Oh, okay, fine. Now I see it. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. I, I have a quick comment. <laughs> um, just, I was, I'm very grateful for, for um, your girls um, playing and teaching my children at the camp, summer camp, <laughs> Sterni and, and the rest of them. I, I never got yeah. to, because of the isolation, I never got to spend much time, but they've been talking about them lots. And uh, for your beautiful family, all the JLR courses I enjoyed with Rabbi Groner, and we're just very grateful. Thank you very much. What's your name? Judith. Judith. Nice to meet you, Judith. Nice to meet you too. Yes, yes. I'll oh. tell Sharon, she'll be very happy. Three beautiful Thank girls. You. Yeah. Three beautiful <laughs> girls, yeah. And I like when your sisters come to visit and stays Barifka usually. Hi, Risha, everyone. So nice. So, so nice. Thank you. Esti, is then, Rabbi Groner your, your father in law? The one Which Rabbi Groner? I the what there I took a class for, with the JLI in Calgary. He gave that's, a class on the Mashiach. That's her husband. That's her husband. That's my husband. Oh, that's your husband? <laughs> yes. Okay. I was that make sure. me look young? No, yeah, no. maybe that's it. Look maybe you look so young. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's my husband. He gave a great class. I really Thank learned you. a lot about Mashiach, um, coming of Mashiach from him. And you can tell him it was a great class. I will. Thank oh, you. Very nice. Very nice. So tomorrow, that's amazing. And we're still going to leave some time when we finish the class for more birthday wishes and hear more from, from everyone. And so, Holly, you want to say something now? We'll say later, whatever your girls want. Okay. Uh, Naomi wrote, very nice. Well, I'm sure we'll have a uh, thank you. We'll have to keep all the chats, right? So, um, uh, as okay. to See, we have so much what to discuss about Sukkot, but time is short and we discuss such beautiful, we, have, we celebrate Esti's 40th. So next week we can still catch up with Sukkot or we'll go to Simchat Torah. We'll make it in short. Uh, the first part of the month are days of awe, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. We refer to Hashem as a king, as a ruler, as a judge as a merciful father, merciful parent. It's more serious. We make resolutions. Uh, we ask Hashem for a good year. And now comes the joy, the time of joy. Why is it time of joy? Because we know that Ayom Kippur, when we reach the peak, and we were so close to Hashem, we fasted, we were like angels, like we learned last week. We know, we are sure that Hashem gave us a good year, a healthy year, with all the blessings, just like us to wish us all, and everything will be great. And we made new resolutions, and we want to keep it all, and we will keep it all. And now comes the time of Sukkot. 
is the time to be happy, to get those blessings and bring them into fruition. When we had Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah especially, the month just started. The moon was very, very small. It was just the birth of the moon. If you look tonight outside, especially tomorrow night and the day after, the moon is whole because it's the middle of the month. The moon is full. We have all those blessings and now we have to use it. As Esti mentioned before, that the sukkah is something that it's like swaddling us. It's a special mitzvah that, <clears throat> that encompasses our whole body. It gives us that comfort. We come from Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, from days of awe, and we know that Hashem gave us a good year, and now we'll be able to keep it. It's time of joy to relate to Hashem in a different way, not in a way of a judge, not in a way of a king that we're scared of, but in a happy way to relate to Hashem, as a friend, in a happy way. And now... The mitzvah of sukkah, we have many, many reasons for it. One of the reasons is that Hashem said, and I'll say it in Hebrew, as you always know, I like to say in Hebrew for those of us who understand the Hebrew and can translate, and then I'll translate into English. Hashem said to the Jewish people, Zacharti lach chesed nuraich, avat klulotaich, lechtech acharai vanidbar, be'eret lo zroah. That's a long sentence. Hashem says, I remember your if I may say your first love, when we were engaged, Hashem and the Jewish people, when you went up to me in the desert, blind love, blind faith, and we were there, you didn't have anything, and you, you still went after me because you knew that I'm going to take care of you. And that was when the Jewish people were in the desert, they lived in tents, right? And we had an Aneha Kavod, the... Uh, clouds of glory, Ananeya Kavod, Anana Kavod, and we had Anan Ha'esh, a cloud of fire at night that gave the Jewish people light. And basically we were all protected. So when we sit in the sukkah, we show Hashem, we remember when we were 40 years in the desert, you took care of us. We were never cold, we were never hot, we didn't have any snakes, any wild animals that would hurt us, we were all taken care of by you. So now when we sit in the sukkah, we show our bitachon, our trust, our emunah in Hashem, that Hashem will take care of us now as well. In whatever situation we are, Hashem will take care of us. If you notice, the roof of the sukkah, right? We can't have a real roof, it's schach. The schach is made out of branches, palm branches, or, or bamboo, or whatever. Now the schach cannot cover the sukkah very, very tight. You have to be able to see a little bit the stars, a little bit the, the sun is to get in. We have to see the sky. So when we look from the sukkah up, not like in a home, in a house, our ceiling, God forbid, if it has a hole, it's no good. The rain will come in everything. We can't see. I mean, unless we have skylights, but then it's not good for a sukkah because it's, uh, it would have uh, glass, right? But normally from a house, you don't see the sky. In the sukkah, you stand and you look up, you see the sky. You remember that Hashem is protecting us wherever we are. And this is a very special mitzvah of the sukkah. Another thing of the sukkah is, it's the only mitzvah that is surrounding us all the way, whatever we do. Besides, as comes out of almost every class, we speak about the mitzvah of mikvah. When we immerse in the mikvah, we immerse our whole body is in the mikvah. But it's very quick, just for a second, right? We can't be too long under the water, but it's a very special mitzvah, the whole body is immersed. The mitzvah of sukkah is extremely special, the other mitzvot, that it's, we are in it with the whole body. Let's say when you do, when we light candles, right? We say the blessing with our mouth and we light with our hands and we cover our eyes and we say the blessing of the mitzvah. When we, we're gonna learn soon, we'll discuss about the, taking the four kinds, the shivat, the arba minim, right? Lulav, etrog, arava, and adas, and we shake it on, um, on uh, Sukkot. So again, we do it with our hands. There's mitzvahs we do with our feet. We smell the, the psalm, we walk to shul. Here in the sukkah is very special. The minute you walk into the sukkah, it's a mitzvah. Anything you eat in there, we say a bracha, baruch atah, uh, you know, on the hamotzi lechem in ours, and we say a bracha, 
Asher Kedesham, we started surrounding the Leshev Vasukah, that you gave us a mitzvah to sit in the sukkah. When we sit in the sukkah, some people sleep in the sukkah, we drink, we play. We are surrounded, our whole body is surrounded in the mitzvah. It's something very, very special. It gives us that energy, as Esther mentioned before, like, we, like you swaddle a baby just went out from the mother's womb. We were in the mother's womb. What does it mean we were in the mother's womb? And Yom Kippur, we were like angels. We didn't have to uh, deal with the mundane world. We were so spiritual. We were so holy. We didn't eat. We didn't drink. We were in shul or we were at home all the time praying. We didn't have to think about anything mundane, anything physical. We were so protected. We were so taken care of, like a baby in the mother's womb. And then the baby is born. You can't throw the baby right away in the cold. You swaddle the baby. It takes time till the baby grows. can be on their own. And this is the example, like we're going, as we said, to the sukkah. From Yom Kippur, we're going to the sukkah. The sukkah is around us. The sukkah is protecting us. The sukkah is telling us we had Rosh Hashanah. We had Yom Kippur. We made all those special resolutions. We, we went to a very high peak, and now we want to keep it. We don't want all those resolutions to go away. So the sukkah will give us energy. Every time we walk to the sukkah, we have that energy, that holiness. Our whole body is in it. Now, I want to tell everyone that we know tomorrow is the first night of Sukkot. Every year, uh, we know in Calgary, some of you are in the chat, uh, were, uh, were not in Calgary, so I want to tell everyone that usually in Calgary, already for the last 32 years that we're here, every year we have, we moved here 88, so the first Sukkot we had, it was 89. And now is 2020, so we can make the count. Can't believe it. Baruch Hashem. We have a, a tradition already that the first night of Sukkot, that Chabad has something that is called open Sukkah, like open house. Anybody can come. Whoever reserves tells us, fine, but we started having 20 people, 50 people, 60 people. The last few years in the new Chabad house, our Sukkah grew and the people grew. We had three, 300, 400 people. So many people came that I didn't know. I had to come to people, usually people come in and say, hello, how are you? Here I had to come to people and say, hello, my name is so-and-so. I'm Rochel Mars, I'm the who are you? How did you hear about uh, the sukkah? It, it was like humbling to see so many people that we never met. And they were all coming to the sukkah. Unfortunately, this year, because we have to take care of ourselves, because Hashem wants us to take care of ourselves, because we're still fighting the coronavirus, unfortunately, uh, perhaps many of you saw that we sent an email that this year we still have the open sukkah and we had made our sukkah double. We doubled the sukkah. That plan was long before COVID started. We had the plan to do it because my husband, Rabbi Marosov, really wanted that people should be able to sit. Usually open sukkah, everybody's standing. We have lots of yummy food, everybody's standing and then we're dancing, we're speaking, but there's no place to sit. There's hardly a place to stand. So we said we're going to make the sukkah double and we'll be able to put tables and people will be able to sit around and then they can stay longer and schmooze and sing and talk and, and so on and so forth. But Hashem had another plan, but now we can use the double sukkah that is so big to have more people with social distancing. So those of you who didn't have a chance yet um, to register, you can still register. What we are doing is we have three different times. Abrofi, you've got to remind, is it 6 or 6, 6.30 the first time, right? If you go on our website- 6.30 is the first. 6.30 and then seven- 6.30, 7.45 and then nine. And then nine. So the first group is 6.30, then a group at 7.45 and then a group at nine. So you can sign up to the time you want. If we're going to have too many people then that we cannot social distance, obviously we'll let you know. We're going to have tables and chairs. Families will sit together. People who are not family will sit on their own table. We prepared a lot of very special food, three kinds of soups, other food, and each one will have a, it will come in those packages. So it will be all pre-packed in a box and the soups, everything. So it's gonna be all uh, clean. Obviously we want everybody to come with masks. When we eat, obviously we're not gonna have masks. If you can please RSVP to chabadalberta.org slash sukkah, chabadalberta.org slash sukkah. Um, you go on the website, you will see. 
and it'll be wonderful. We'll say a bracha together. It will be a short program of 30 minutes since we can't sing, we can't dance, but we're going to have some special family time, some game together, and so on. So we'll have a good time. And then we'll have, when the first group leaves, we'll have time to clean up, to sanitize, and set up everything from new to the second group, and then to the third group. And we also have at 2 o'clock on Sunday, we'll have some food as well. You can, RSVP, you can come tomorrow night and Sunday, because tomorrow night is a very special meal to eat in the sukkah. Monday is a very special time to eat in the sukkah, I'm sorry, Sunday, and to say a bracha, because on Shabbos, we're not allowed to shake the lulav of an etrog. But on uh, Sunday till next Friday, it's a mitzvah to do every day a bracha and lulav and etrog. I know some of you have your own set, perhaps you bought. If you didn't buy, you can call our office. We might still have some for sale, or you can just stop at the sukkah, you can call us, you can come to Chabad House. It's a very special thing to say a bracha in the sukkah. I know this year it's a little bit difficult uh, as far as guests, because in Sukkot is a very special mitzvah. We always love to invite guests. And this year our mitzvah is to be careful, to take care of our health. And then we cannot invite guests the way we did because we do have to keep social distance. And as we know that the government is saying that uh, social gatherings are dangerous because many times it gets, uh, the COVID, God forbid, can be, you know, go from social gathering and so on. So don't feel bad that you can't invite guests. Maybe if people don't have a sukkah, you can call, as we say in Chabaras, it's big, it's open, we can do it there. If you want to come and say a uh, blessing in the sukkah and so on. I do want to tell you girls that all of us who have sukkot and all of us who will come to the community sukkah, the Chabad house, there are special guests that come every night to the sukkah. The Zohar tells us, according to Kabbalah, according to Zohar, we have seven special guests and they come to the sukkah and they are called Ushpizin. Um, Narita, see you ask a question, something about prayer and all the questions and so on, girls, hopefully we'll save all of the chats and I'll answer them late, later. Either, either I'll have time during the class or I'll do it later, I'll answer you uh, privately if that's okay, unless you will ask it again uh, publicly. We have special guests that are coming. We don't get to see those guests unless we are very special people, but we know they're there, their aura is there, their, their light, their presence we feel and we learn from them. They are Ushpizin. Ushpizin in Aramaic means Orchim, guest. Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, hope I remember all their names in order. Um, Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Moshe, Aaron, Yosef, and King David and David. They're very special. And every night when they come, we learn something from them in the sukkah. There are uh, people that have customs to say a special thing. Welcome Avram tonight to our sukkah. Welcome Yitzchak, welcome Yaakov. And we'll discuss only Avram for a few minutes because from Avram we learn uh, the first night that's gonna be tomorrow night. I can't believe it's ready to sukkah tomorrow, I get shivers. From Avram we learn kindness. Avram brought chesed, Avram had a lot of kindness. He would always as guests, he would always judge everybody favorably. There are many, many things that Avram did in Avram's Lesson to us is kindness. So the first night of Sukkot, when we have that special guest, Avram comes to the Sukkah, we can meditate, we can think about it, and we can get stronger in the attribute of kindness. And each of us knows how much we can learn more, how much we can be more to learn to be more kind. The following night is Yitzchak. Yitzchak is Gvura, severity. We have to know when we have to use severity. Many times it's not good to be kind. Many times we have to say no. And the easiest example to bring is if a child wants to take a knife or something sharp, or you know the child will hurt themselves and they're running to the street and you scream. Why are you screaming? You have to be kind, you have to be nice. No, many times you do have to use your strong voice, you have to use severity because you are disciplining the child, you're saving the child. Many times to be kind and to say yes, not in the right time is not good, whether it's with children, whether it's with a spouse, <coughs> sorry, whether it's for ourselves. Many times we're not good to indulge in something. We know that it's not, that we have to stop because <coughs> for our health, it's better not to. 
another thing that I want to share as well, <coughs> I'm sorry, I need a cup of water. <coughs> Something got in my throat. The other special mitzvah on Sukkot, as we discuss, is to take four kinds of vegetation and we put it all together and we shake it, right? We take the lulav. Lulav is the palm front. Um, the etrog is a citrus fruit. It's not a lemon, but it's very special fruit um, that we get. That's etrog. Then we have the hadassim, the myrtle branches, three of them. And the aravot is the, um, no, the word came out of my mouth, uh, just lost. Uh, the Hadas, the Myrtle Darabot is the willow branches, I'm sorry. Now, why are we putting it all together? Each fruit, each vegetation presents something. The etro, the citrus fruit, it has a very good fragrance, has a very good aroma. If you take the etro and you smell it, it smells like a citrus fruit. And it also has a good taste. It has a taste of a fruit. So it has both. Thank you. How nice to say a blessing and thank Hashem for the water. It actually made me think. So good, just washed my throat down, my dryness. The lulav, the tol lulav from palm tree has a taste. Not the lulav itself, but the fruit, the date has a taste, but it has no fragrance, has no aroma, has no smell. Now the myrtle, the hadas has very good smell. And the willow, the arava, has no taste and no smell. What does it represent? Torah represents taste, because taste is something within. You taste something in your mouth. When I'm tasting something, somebody else doesn't taste it. Smell, I can smell something and you can smell. Smell, we can share. But a taste, usually you taste it, it's in your tongue, in your mouth. Somebody else has to put it in their mouth to taste. When we learn Torah, it goes inside of us. It goes in our brain. It's something that becomes part of us. We know it. It's our knowledge. And it becomes part of us. And this is Torah represents taste. The smell, the aroma, is the, it represents mitzvot, good deeds. Because good deeds, it's with someone else. The smell is with someone else. When you do a mitzvah, you share it with someone else. Someone else also benefits. Obviously, when you learn Torah, you can you share with someone else as well. But mitzvot speaks about <clears throat> the smell that you share with someone else. We have four kinds of Yidin in the Jewish nation. We have the Yidin that are like an etrog, that I think all of us want to be like the etrog. As you notice, I didn't say a blessing again. Once you say a blessing once and it's still the same cup of water or tea or whatever food you're eating, you don't have to keep on saying blessing over and over unless I'm going to drink again in an hour. <clears throat> then you're going to have to say a blessing again. Etrog are, are Jewish people that have Torah and mitzvot, that study Torah and do good deeds. Dudula represent Jewish people that learn Torah. They like to be, they say, I'm a Jew in my heart. I know, I know what the right thing to do is, but they don't do it. They just learn, but the learning doesn't come to fruition. Something is missing, obviously, when you know, I know I have to cook for my kids, I know I have to feed my kids, but I don't cook and I don't feed them. The knowledge doesn't help. It's important to learn, but the learning has to come to fruition. You have to do something with your learning. I know that I have to give tzedakah, but if I don't give the tzedakah, it's not enough. I know I have to make a blessing on the sukkah, but I have to do the, uh, the sukkah, uh, to go to the sukkah. Khanit, I see what you're asking about the arava. Maybe we'll discuss it next week. I don't know if we have enough time today, but Chibut Aravot, which we do, we are doing it um, next uh, Friday, actually. So next Thursday, God willing, we should, I'll try to remember to discuss it. Now, the Jewish people are like Hadas, like the myrtle. It has a good smell. They do mitzvot. They help, but they are not really knowledgeable. They don't learn Torah. So they're missing also something because it is important to learn. It's important to know. As we say many times, the more you learn, the more you know, 
then you you want to do it more. You want to you want to do more mitzvot. You want to do more things because when you know, when you understand, you're doing more. That's why in our generation we are, we know much more. The Hasidus, the Kabbalah was revealed because people don't do just well. Because my mother told me, or my father told me, or uh, um, the older generations did that, so I should do it also. Now the children are asking why. We have to explain. You will brush your teeth much better if you know that if you don't brush your teeth. You can get cavities, you're gonna lose your teeth, God forbid, you can have, can have a root canal and so on and so forth. When a child is young, they don't understand, they don't comprehend. Once they start to understand, and they know they're brushing the teeth, not to do the mother a favor, or the teacher, or the hygienist, or the dentist, they're doing it to themselves. So when we learn Torah, we understand, we know why we wanna light candles tomorrow night, why we wanna keep Shabbos, why we want to sit in the sukkah? We understand why. So we are doing the mitzvah with so much more happiness, with so much more um, willingness, and, 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 and it's so much nicer. And the last one is uh, the willow branch that has no smell and no taste. It's Jewish people that don't know Torah and don't do mitzvot yet. And what are we learning on... Uh, Sukkot, that we're taking all of them together, we're tying them, all of them together. We cannot say, well, I am a better one because I know Torah. I'm better because I do mitzvot. Well, I do both. I'm this, I'm that. I don't do anything. We all have to be together. When we are connected, when we are all together, then we learn from each other. When the, you take the lula, the, the etrog, that has such a good smell, such a good fragrance, right? A good aroma, and you hold it long enough next to the willow, then the willow will smell also. We rub at each other. We have to learn from each other. Another thing that I read today as well is the etrog is very small, right? The citrus fruit. And it seems as though it's the most, in, the most important one, right? Because it has both the smell and the taste. It has Torah and mitzvot. And it's small. Why isn't it big? Many times the people who are the tzaddik, the people who are good, the people who are special, like all of us that have Torah and mitzvot, and we're gonna wanna try to be like that, we're gonna do more and more. Sometimes Hashem is challenging us because we are so strong, we have both, and sometimes we have challenges. It challenges us to make us stronger because we know that the etrog is a very, the citrus fruit is a very strong fruit that can grow in 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 uh, good weathers, in bad weathers, it's, it's, it can, maintain a lot. And that's what we're going through now. I thought that explanation meant a lot to us now, that we're going through a very hard time in history. I know we spoke about it and everybody thinks we never ever thought that such a time can come, that all of us have to wear masks, that we cannot get together in shul. All the shuls this year in Yom Kippur had so few people, never ever it happened before. And we did it with our own choice because we won't want to protect ourselves. And many of us were afraid to go to sit with other people. Obviously those of us who did go to shul, I know in the Chabaras we had social distance and everyone had their own book, their own plate, their own chair. It was not easy to do it all. And when we dive in, we say Avinu Malkeinu, all those um, things that we tell Hashem, take the sickness away, take this away, take this away. When we read, I know myself, take away a plague, a magifa, magifa okay. you know, the plagues used to be years ago because science wasn't as developed, medicine wasn't as developed. Now we don't have any plagues. And Hashem showed us that here we have a plague with all the science, with all the systems, we didn't know how to get rid of it. And it takes so long and unfortunately the whole world is affected. It showed us that we need to have a lot of bitachon, a lot of trust a lot of belief in Hashem, because who controls the world? Hashem. And that's what we do when we go to the sukkah. Everybody goes into the house. It's full. It's cold. We go to the sukkah to show Hashem that we trust Hashem, that we thank Hashem that when our ancestors were in Egypt, they were, I'm sorry, they were in the desert, Hashem protected us. And that's why we know that Hashem will protect us also. And we know that we can be strong like the Etrog and we're gonna go through this difficult time with the Corona and we're gonna prevail and we're gonna do all the mitzvot that we can. Obviously girls, we have to be very careful this year when we take the, when we say the brocha and lulu of an Etrog, since not everyone has it. And usually we go and we share with other people to shake it. So obviously you wanna sanitize your hands 
before you touch somebody else's lulav and etrog, and you say the blessing, and then after you sanitize your hands as well, just in case, you know, because somebody else touched it. I'm sure nobody has the virus, but we have to be careful and we have to transfer the days of awe to days of joy. The first part of, of the month, we had Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur night, the month of happiness, of joy, of Sukkot, of celebration of all, all the special things. Something else I want to say also from the four kinds that we said, the Etrog, Lulav, Adasa, and Aravot, we think Aravai is so simple. Aravai doesn't have the myrtle, right? The, um, another myrtle, the willow, doesn't have a taste or a smell. But usually, where does the willow grow? Willow grows next, next to body of water, next to a river, next to a lot of water. Water represents Torah as well. And it's showing us that even to teach us that even those Jews among us that meanwhile don't have, don't know Torah, don't know mitzvot, they have that connection there by the water, they have that connection to Torah. We just have to embrace them. We have to invite them. We have to show them by example, not to show fingers. We are all united. When we say a bracha, we hold it all together and we are all united and we are we are all responsible for each other. We all care for each other. Um, I wonder if somebody has a question, which I can just ask. I know the Rebbe asked, we're not going to have time to answer, perhaps another time or maybe next year. The Rebbe is asking a question, and I'm thinking maybe some of you are thinking that as well. We are saying that the etrog is so special. The etrog has a taste and a smell. But the lulav is the tallest. So why do we say Baruch on the Lulav? Because the Lulav is the tallest. Why do we say Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kedeshan V'Mistav Etzivan Al Netilak Lulav And you hold all the four kinds and you shake it, right? We shake it to all the sides to bring holiness to all the sides of the earth. And there's so much more on Sukkot that we don't have a minute. time now to say Baruch Hashem we spend uh, such quality time with Esther's 40th birthday. Why do we say Baruch on Lulav just because it's the tallest? I'm sure there's another deep answer. But this is something you can read about. Maybe you can Google and see the answer. You can share with us or we will share it next week. Um, obviously, tomorrow, girls, I want to remind everyone again that we are um, lighting candles. Tomorrow is Friday night. We're lighting candles twice. We're lighting tomorrow night and we're lighting again Saturday night. Tomorrow night, we're lighting early, maybe before seven. I hope by now you all got our calendars. <laughs> Because in the Torah there is a mitzvah that says tadir, no tadir, tadir kodem. Tadir means something that always comes. Shabbos is more times than Sukkot. Shabbos is every week. Sukkot is once a year. So something that is, happens more often, we say the blessing first. So we say ladlik ne'er shel Shabbat. Yom Tov, and then obviously we say the bracha shehecheyanu. And then Saturday night, we light candles as well, but we make sure that it's dark, that it's already Shabbos is over. You will see it in the calendars. And we also have to light it from a pre-existing flame, obviously. Uh, girls, you have some questions. I want to open it. We have two more minutes for the class. Uh, if somebody wants to share something else, we know that at times I do want to say, uh, if we come for the first shift, can we light the candles? Very good, yes. Uh, those people are coming for the first shift tomorrow, obviously because it's 6.30, it's still before candle lighting. It's a very good question because many times, most of the times when people come from the open sukkah, you can light candles the whole evening because it's usually during the week. But whenever Sukkot comes on Shabbos, the first night especially, the open Sukkot is on Shabbos, tomorrow we can light candles only till, I think, 10 to 7 or something like that. I'm not sure, whatever the time, uh, Rabbi Rahi, sometime before 7. So whoever comes at 6.30, the first shift, just make sure you register, obviously, so we know to prepare place. We'll have lots of food, but because of social distance, please, 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 everybody register. And you can tell everybody we keep it very clean, very sanitized, all the food is boxed. We are very, very, very careful. 
as far as I know, even more than AHS, the way we prepare and, and so on and so forth, the way we take it out, gloves, sanitize, we'll change the tablecloth and so on. You'll be able to light the candles in the sukkah in the Chabad house, yes. And then we'll, uh, we'll usher the time of Sukkot. So again, those, those of us who will be in the Sukkah break, those of us who can be in the Sukkah tomorrow night or another night come, but just remember it's the time that, the time of joy. Happiness, that's the time to draw joy, to get uplifted to tell Hashem, we don't want to have anything said anymore and just to be happy, just to see everyone in a good light, to judge everyone favorably. It's so wonderful to be able to be happy. Girls, this is a very high level, I know for me, and I'm sure it's not an easy one. Maybe for some of you it's easy, easier than others, to be happy with everything Hashem is giving us and to be happy when somebody else is happy, to be happy with someone else's successes, with somebody else's happiness. You know, and, and not to be jealous. Oh, my friend reached that. My friend has this. My colleague, my sister, my brother. I'm so happy that they have it, even though it could be something that you really long for, that you really need, that you really want to have for so many years, but you still didn't get. For some reason, Hashem is giving it to someone else before Hashem is giving it to you. And it's not easy. It's not easy just to say, I'm so happy for someone else. You can say, it's easy to say, but really to feel in our heart. And this is the, the eight days, the time now of Zman Simchaten, we dance, we are happy. Unfortunately, we cannot dance together the way we did all the years. And in Beit HaMikdash, it was the time of Simchat Beit HaShoeva, the time that they drew water on the altar uh, with water. Again, we don't have time to go into all the details. I'm sorry, I didn't see a question. Somebody asked, maybe we're gonna open the floor and you'll be able to ask me whoever wants to stay longer. Um, it's the time that we draw joy, draw joy and joy and joy. And let's decide on that. And every night, remember, we have those special guests that we don't see, but we can feel their aura if we want. We can feel the presence. Avram, Mitzchak, Yaakov, Moshe, Aaron, David, Yosef. It's amazing, such great people are coming to our sukkah every night, to come to any sukkah. Let's use it. Let's get excited. And, and when we are in the sukkah, we can make again all those resolutions that we made on Rosh Hashanah. We can make new ones. We can just tell Hashem, Hashem, help us to be able to fulfill them, help us to be able to do it and to continue to be the good person that we want to be. You can unmute, you, unmute yourself. We can say more happy birthdays to Esti. We can ask questions about Sukkot. Esti, this is Hallie. I just wanted to say how wonderful it is to see you since it's been so long. And I wish you many, many happy, healthy, sweet years of happiness with your family, your children, your parents, the whole mishpocha, and certainly everyone here. We love you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Hallie. Thank you so much, Yes, It's really great to see you. Uh, yes. Thank God for Zoom, huh? You know? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah, nice to see everyone. It's yes. so wonderful how the second time you're joining us now. It's wonderful. Yeah, amazing. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? I saw you make a blessing on water, and I didn't know you're supposed to make a blessing on water because I thought water has no taste and no smell. And I thought I read somewhere you only make a blessing on water if you're thirsty. But if like if if you're not super thirsty and you're just taking a sip of it, you don't take a, make a blessing. Do you could you explain that to me? I I don't know. Maybe it says somewhere. I'm going to slam look at you now. <laughs> um, I always, usually you drink water because you benefit from it. If you're not thirsty, sometimes you drink water because you want to lose weight or you want to hydrate yourself before Yom Kippur or you want to hydrate yourself, hydrate yourself because it's important or because you're thirsty or, or whatever else. Um, so you Wait. say a blessing. I know oh. uh, in medicine, I hear that sometimes you don't say a blessing because it's something bitter or just a little bit, you just swallow. But here I, I was, I mean, I wasn't very thirsty, but I needed it. So you say on water, water is something so special. Okay, so I do say a blessing on water. Oh, yeah. Water is so, yeah. I'm not Thank sure you. if there's some opinion, my pleasure, but I do, we do say blessing. And this is something also so easy. With Sukkot, we really think about it because every time we come into Sukkah, 
We want to say a blessing that we are in the sukkah, but we cannot say a blessing unless we eat something. So we eat better bread or cake, you know, something mezonot or amotzi, and then we say a blessing sitting in the sukkah. So every time we feel that the presence of Hashem, that Hashem is around us, right? We are in that box, that in the cloud of Hashem, in the, you know, you stand in the sukkah, girls think, not just standing between those walls that are made of plastic or wood or canvas or whatever that is. You're standing in the clouds of glory. Think that we were in the desert for 40 years, our ancestors, our souls, we were there. We discussed many times that it says that the last generation that will bring Moshiach, our souls, our neshamas are from the people who left Egypt, from the Yotzei tribe, those special people in the same way as those women that left Egypt because of their merit. It says, Bishut Nashim Tzitkaniyot, the Jewish people went out of Egypt. In our merit, we're gonna go out also now from the Egypt, from the Galut, from this last exile, we're gonna have Moshiach, I mean soon. So we don't remember, but our souls were there as well. We were in Egypt and we were in the desert and we were in those Sukkot that Hashem built us, right? That, that Hashem protected us. So when we're still in the Sukkot, let's try this year, as we said each year that Hashem gave us more life and more days and more so, we want to learn, we want to experience something in a different way. Let's experience that Sukkot spiritual part to re really gain the, the trust, the, the belief in Hashem, that Hashem will take care of us, that everything will be okay. For 40 years, the Jewish people didn't have to worry about food, about clothing. The clothing grew with them. The manna fell from heaven. No animals, no heat, no cold. Amazing. Imagine what miracle for 40 years. And now we're standing in that sukkah and we think, Hashem, yeah, we have a warm home. But we're coming into the sukkah to eat and to drink. And we're telling you that we know you're going to take care of us for everything that we need not just the five minutes or the hour that we are in the sukkah, our whole life. And we are so thankful. And it's days of joy, joy, sorry. Zman simchatenu, we get the happiness. And you will see, we'll feel a such, a much, much better sukkot and a much better time after sukkot. Ooh. Some other questions or some other comments? I just want to say Etsy, hi, it's Rosie Gordon. Sorry, I came late from shul um, today, very late, but... Um, I wanted to wish you a very, very happy birthday and all the best. Thank you so much, Rosie. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Mazel tov, mazel tov. Yes, and it's, mazel tov to you. I have one last thanks. question. Rebbe Sin, do people eat at trugs? Like, I've never eat, had an at trug. Do you eat it? Well, we don't eat it during uh, at, at trug, by the way, when people buy, some people can spend 200, 300, 500 mm -hmm. on a trug. So, trug is very nice, has no blemishes. Regular ones also we can get for 60 or 70, 50 dollars as well. So, during Sukkot, obviously. It's a very, it's, it's a very special thing to do. After Sukkot, some people eat it. It's a little bit sour. Many people make a jam out of it. They cut it up and they cook a glass of sugar and they eat it. I tried once, you have to put too much sugar, but it has a, it has a, it has a taste. But it's not a food that you buy to eat, I would think. Right. Yeah, I never had one. I mean, yeah. I know it's for Sukkot, but I've never yeah. tasted an etro. Like a lemon, like a little like a lemon, yeah. Uh, I have to put my glasses to see questions. Rachel, I want to ask you a question about Tarbat Aminim. Yeah. Uh, I know that it is um, um, a custom to shake the lulav uh, in the Sukkah. Uh, yeah. Why do we really do that? And is it just restricted? Uh, is men and women do that? And how often do you shake the lulav in the sukkah? Very good. Oh, I thought I forgot to mention that. Thank you, Narit. To say the blessing on the lulav and etrog, we're supposed to say every day of sukkot, not on Shabbos. On Shabbos, we're not allowed. So Shabbos, we're not going to do it. But from Sunday till next Friday, the whole week, we do it every day. The first day, we do the baruch and we say, Shechianu. Just like any mitzvah that we do the first time, so we say Hashem Yisrael, then it's like Al Netilat Lulav, and then Shechian Vikman Gian Lamana Zeh, and all the rest of the days we just say Al Netilat Lulav. Women are saying the bracha are supposed to say the bracha just as men, 
Um, what you are trying to ask is there are certain mitzvot that time bound, shazman grama, that women weren't commanded to do because we have so many other obligations. And so we don't have that commandment to do as men, but with time, the way she went, women took it upon themselves to do anyway. So we are doing it as well. So for example, like the mitzvah of sukkah, when you're eating in the sukkah, you say the bracha blessing to sit in the sukkah. But if you, for some reason, don't have a sukkah and you cannot have a sukkah, you don't, you, you, you didn't transgress anything. You didn't get that special feeling of being in the sukkah, but you did not make any transgression. But for a man, that would be considered wrong not to eat in the sukkah on uh, Sukkot. So we do say, uh, Sarshalom, do you know how to do so I can see everybody was on it? I don't know how to do it. So women do have the mitzvah also to eat in the sukkah, uh, to say the bracha every day on the lulav and the trog. As far as shake, shaking the lulav, I heard that some people, uh, the women don't shake. Some people, uh, the women do shake. So I don't know, this is a mean hug. I usually shake as well. And, uh, but this is, uh, you don't must, it's not a must to, sh to shake, you mean like to go to right, left, up, down, right, like all the six uh, uh, things, you don't have to, the, the mitzvah is if you say a broch and you shake it a little bit, you don't have to shake too much, otherwise you can break the lulav, and many people shake it hard, it's not good because you can make the, the lulav, the tol lulav, not kosher if it opens up, but uh, to say a bracha is, very, very special every day. Especially now, girls, that we learned, we're putting them all together, we're connecting, we're uniting with all the Eden together, right? The one that are learner, the, learned Eden, the one that do just mitzvot, the one that know more, the one that know less. It's such a special lesson and it's so good to do it. And when you say the blessing, I'm thinking now something comes to mind, I would think, let's think about all those friends that we have, that we can influence them whether teach them another mitzvah, whether teach them more Torah or something like that, to really unite, not just to think, okay, I know, good for me. Who else can I call? I cannot invite too many people personally, but who else I can call to tell them about the mitzvah, to tell them they can go to Chabaras, to the sukkah, and say a brocha there, and so on and so forth. So we do just for the, uh, to um, have everybody together, that's the togetherness, that's the reason to do the shaking of the lulav in the sukkah. This is one of, this is one of the, one of the reasons it symbolized. that what we learn and what everything symbolizes. It has so many uh, reasons, you know, you learn more Kabbalah, more Hasidus, more what each food symbolizes, what this, you know, I mentioned one uh, aspect of it the most known one and the most, and, and the one that, yeah, it does unity. I mean, we can go on more and more. I must say, before I take more questions, that it's amazing because it's already after nine and all of us still, so many of us are here because we want to learn, we want to know, and that's, we're just showing Hashem that we want Hashem to give us really a good year and Hashem is giving us a good year because we all have work to do and we all have to cook for Yantav and, 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 and many other things that we have to do for our daily jobs and so on, not just cooking as most of our women here are, are working women that don't, you know, not just housewives, but work also outside the home, not that just to be a housewife is nothing, it's a big job. And many of us also work outside the home, so it's a double job. And we have to find our cooking to do at night and we're still all here, want to learn more. It's really, really special, it really warms up my heart. Um, some other questions, some other comment. Can I ask you another question, Rachel? When we go in the sukkah, the first thing we say is the blessing of going in, like to sit la sheva sukkah. Is that the first blessing? No, we don't. We don't say any blessing when we come in. We, we don't. Come into the sukkah, we, we're happy with so on and so forth when we eat. You have to eat when you eat, either as I said, a bread, challah bread, like hamotzi, or uh, if you take um, cake, cereal, pasta, mezonot, the bracha and mezonot, or, or hamot. And usually we have the custom that we try always in our sukkah at home or what, to keep always cake covered. So if somebody, uh, wafers, pretzels, whatever, something like that, so somebody goes into the sukkah, they should be able to say a bracha. So like uh, we say the bracha and the lulav first, and then we say also a bracha on a, on a piece of cake or something, so we can say a bracha, leshev vasukah, to sit in the sukkah. Because we don't say that the bracha of standing in the sukkah, it's got to be on the food. 
and better on the cake, on mezonot or on bread. But did you say you say the blessing on the or first wine or kiddush or kiddush? What? Do you say the blessing on the four species first when you first walk into the sukkah, or okay. you have the food? Okay, so maybe a little bit confusing. Sorry. When we walk in the sukkah at night or on Shabbos, we don't say the bracha on the four on the four species, right? When we walk at night or in the day or any time during Sukkot and we want to eat and we're eating mezonot or, 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 or hamotzi, then we say the bracha mezonot or hamotzi and we say the bracha sheke the shalom v'sav etzivano l'shev v'sukkah to sit in the sukkah. The four kinds, the shivat, the arba minim, when we do the bracha al netilat lulav, the etrog and or the, the four kinds, we do only once every day. I hope it's clear. I'm sorry if I didn't make it clear. We do it only once every day of Sukkot. Sunday once, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If somebody's asking you, oh, do you want to do the mitzvah of, of the four kinds? If you did it already, say, I did it already. Don't do it again because it's going to be a blessing in vain. But to come to the Sukkot every time you eat, it's not a blessing in vain. You eat the breakfast, you eat snack, you eat lunch, oh. you eat supper. Every time you eat, you can say the bracha, leshev basukkah, to sit in the sukkah. But when we do the four kinds, we do it only once a day. But not, not on Shabbat. But not on Shabbat. On Shabbat, it's muktza. We're not allowed to carry it on Shabbat. We're not allowed to touch it on Shabbos. On Shabbos, it's a special holy day. So because it's Shabbat sukkot, even though we don't shake the lulav, Whatever we accomplish with shaking the lulav on Sukkot, we accomplish on Shabbat Sukkot without shaking. The unity, the specialness, we accomplish on Shabbat with, without shaking the lulav. The same way, if you remember, we discussed it this year on Rosh Hashanah. It's very special. This year, Rosh Hashanah started on Shabbos. Shabbos mm -hmm. represents Shabbat Menucha, quiet, everything peace and so on. That's kind of a year that we should have. On Shabbos, this year, we didn't blow shofar because on Shabbos, you're not allowed to blow shofar. We blow shofar just on Sunday. So you can say what? To blow shofar, that's the mitzvah of Rosh Hashanah. Mitzvah tayom b'shofar. And what do you mean? You don't blow shofar on Rosh Hashanah. So what is the whole thing? Because it's Shabbos, it's muksa. Because Shabbos, is such a special day and so much holiness that on Shabbos Rosh Hashanah, we accomplish whatever we accomplish on a mundane day of Rosh Hashanah, we blow shofar. On Shabbos Rosh Hashanah, we accomplish it without blowing the shofar because the Shabbos has that holiness, that special thing on, on, on Rosh Hashanah that we don't need to blow shofar for that. I and see. So we don't do the blessing on Lulav till Sunday. Like, just like the shofar was on Sunday. So yes. we just, the Shabbos takes precedent. We, we, we just say the blessings on the food when we come in, la shev basuka, and, and that's it. Very good, right? And the, and the, and the lulav and network we do every day. So those of you who don't have, you can come to Chabad House, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you can drive, even if you can do it once or twice. Come with your children. As I said, we have sanitized. You'll sanitize your hands before you touch the lulav. Then you sanitize after. It takes two minutes to say the blessing. But it's very special. Very, very special. Very special feeling. And that should bring us really a lot of unity in the Jewish people. We should really feel the unity. Every yonta that we do, we should really feel the specialness, the holiness, the, what it's supposed to bring. And Sukkot is happiness, simcha, happiness, happiness, happiness. Thank you so much for explaining that to me. My pleasure, my pleasure, girl. Somebody else wants to say something to something else? We're getting late, it's just so nice to, to have if you. I, if you don't mind. First, uh, once in Israel, and they read the Kohelet scroll. Is it a minhag or what is it? How is it connect to Sukkot, the Kohelet? They read it in, in they, the Sukkah. Invited. I don't know the reason why Kohelet. I don't know. I know like a Shavuot, they read Shira Shirim. Well, that is like love song because on Shavuot we got married with Hashem, right? We got, we got the Torah. I can find out. I know, but th these are different customs. I don't think in Chabad we read Kohelet, but many, I think the Sephardic Jews, probably the Moroccan custom, Hanid, I think is probably to read Kohelet. There are many Jewish customs. 
And another question that I have, is it a halacha or kind of a minhag that at the end of Yom Kippur, you're doing the first yeted of the sukkah? So what, like, why do you need to do it right away? I didn't, uh, uh, yeah, I, I want to say, and I appreciate you reminding me, I think I would have said before, nine o'clock officially, the class is over, whoever wants to stay, and I'm trying to uh, answer, that's great, but you don't have to, I mean, if you want to stay, that's great. Uh, thank you for the reminder, whoever reminded me, and I'm reminding again. Um, the only reason I'm not closing is because I feel bad. If people want to learn, I feel bad to go, but we'll close soon. Hanit, I know I thought to speak about it today, but we didn't have time, but since you're bringing it up. But Hanit said that there is such a minhag, such a custom, a uh, special mitzvah, that um, the reason I say a custom is because a mitzvah is something that we are obliged to do. A custom also becomes a mitzvah when it's in our family, in our community that we do it, but it's not a must, but it's something very special to do that the minute Yom Kippur is finished and we take something to eat or drink, we go out to the backyard and we try to start building the sukkah, even to put a nail or something into the sukkah. And the reason is, Khanit, is because we show Hashem that we just finished Yom Kippur, like we said, we were like angels, it was days of awe, and now all those resolutions that we made to be special, to be good, to keep Torah mitzvot, we are continuing it now. So we started right away with the next mitzvah. What's the next mitzvah after Yom Kippur? Is Sukkot. So we're right away starting to build the sukkah. That's the... That's the so mitzvah. it's a mitzvah. So it's a mitzvah. It's a good deed. Yeah, it's, it's something special. But if you don't do it, you did not do a transgression. But it's a wonderful thing. I see I have another question here. Learning amazing. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Hannah Lori, for your beautiful, uh, beautiful note. Beautiful note. Thank you. That we're all, we're all learning together. It is very, very special. Very, very nice. We should continue, God willing. Let's use those days of Sukkot. And next week, next Thursday, we're going to learn about the special time that is Hoshana Rabbah, which is next Friday, about Shmini Atzeret, about Simchas Torah, what it represents, what special time it is. And let's use the baggage that we get, the, the good baggage. You know, usually we say you carry a baggage, but I mean the, the gifts, maybe let's not say baggage, the gift that, gave, that Hashem gave us on Rosh Hashanah, everything that we dove in, that we cried for on Yom Kippur, now we're going to use it with happiness. And let's really use it in happiness, in happiness, in happiness. And, and um, that will give us so much joy. And that will give us so much health and give us everything good, everything that we have to thank Hashem for it. As we said, in the morning, Moderni, before we go to sleep tonight. And these days are very special from after Yom Kippur till the end of the month of Tishrei, we do we don't say any confession. We don't say tachanum. When we say Shema tonight, we don't say Hashem no bagadnu. We just say Shema. We tell Hashem that we forgive everyone. Remember, we spoke about that special blessing, special prayer, how nice it is when we go to sleep every night. And before we go to sleep, we say a prayer to Hashem. I forgive everyone. I'm, go I'm going to sleep without any grudges, without any resentment. It's not easy. It's not easy to reach, but we're trying to re we should try to reach that, um, that special, thank you, and we'll finish with that, a special feeling that you go to sleep so calm, you really forgive everyone who hurt you because you judge everyone favorably, they probably didn't mean to hurt you, and even you think they did mean, and you go to sleep, and then you say shma, and we wake up in the morning, go fresh, we say, Modeani, thank you, Hashem, for giving us another day. And I know that we still have a lot to do tonight. I do. And we have a lot to do tomorrow to prepare for Sukkot, to prepare for all the special things. Please sign up, whoever wants to come to the Sukkah. Come to say the bracha on the uh, four kinds. Good night. Good yontev. All yeah. the best. And, and I'm sure that we're going to have a very, very, very special year, a special that is started on Shabbos, and tomorrow Sukkot is coming on Shabbos. It's going to be Shabbat Menucha, a peaceful, wonderful, wonderful year, wonderful holiday. Amen. Thank you so Good much, Rocho. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you, Rocho. Thank you, everyone, again, for joining.
Thank you. Thank you. Really, really special. Thank well, you. What's again. happened in Thank here? you, everybody. Christy, Thank happy you, Rachel. Birthday. Again, have a very, very special year. Super extra sweet. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gina. Thank you. Thank you, Esther, for all the brachot. Thank you, everybody, for joining for Esther's birthday. Yes. Thank Thank you. You. to everybody. Thank you.